praise the Lord. Amen. How many want to learn to have complete and total access? Amen. Well, we're going to be a walk on a journey out to discover just how we can have total access of the things of God. Amen. I mean, it's one thing to know God somewhere and you're trying to figure stuff out, but God really wants to reveal himself very clear to us. And he wants us to have access. He's not keeping anything from us at all. And we're going to see this in some passages of Scripture as we get into this study. In Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7, we're going to start there uh, um, as we take time to go through Scripture to see exactly what God, how God wants us to access him. Okay? And in Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7, it says, For a child will be born to us, a son will be given to us. Who is this child or son? Can you tell me his name? Jesus. What's his name? Jesus. His name's Jesus. What's his name? Jesus. His name's Jesus. Do we all agree to that? Yes. yes, and scholars agree to this as well. No one debates whether or not this is Jesus. This is Jesus. But I want to point this out before we go a little bit further here because it's very important for us to recognize a child is born, a son is not born. A child is born, but a son is not born. And why is that significant? Because that lets us know of the deity of the Son. Because this is Jesus. This is God who's always been, and he clothed himself in a skin suit. So a child, which is the flesh suit that God legally gained access to the planet Earth, deposited himself in, emptied himself of his heavenly glory, placed himself in a skin suit called a child, and the son is given to humanity. The son has always existed. John 1, 1 tells us, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And the 14th verse of John chapter 1 says, and the word became flesh. The word became flesh. The Word became flesh, and we beheld the glory of the only begotten Son. Who is that? His name is Jesus. And so Jesus Christ is the Word. The Word is God, and Jesus was in the beginning. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are one, and they were in the beginning. So the Son always existed, but the Son came to the earth for a reason. Say, for a reason. Now, unfortunately, not everybody knows the full reason of why Jesus came. They only know a part of the reason, and that part is truth, but it's only a part nonetheless. And we want to uh, let you discover more of why Jesus came to earth, not just so that when we leave our skin suits, our bodies, and we, our spirit man is separated, that we would be present with the Lord to never be uh, condemned and judged to be cast into the lake of fire, which is the second death. Most people have a relationship with Jesus just on that truth alone. They, they only, want, only know that Jesus saved them from eternal damnation, and by asking Jesus to save them when they die, they'll be in heaven with God. But that's not the only reason Jesus came. A child was born. A son is given. Now let's read on. And the government, say government. And the government, say government. The government will rest on his shoulders. Notice it did not say religion. It did not say that. Nor does it actually say Christianity. Now let me stop right here. Because the minute you say that, then all of a sudden people who are religious get really upset. But let's just really define Christianity. To be a Christian means to be Christ-like. Now the problem is, is a lot of people don't know who Christ is and how Christ walked. So they are assuming there's something that they're actually not acting like. Amen. Jesus was a man who knew no sin. So Jesus was able to walk and navigate on life in life and able to keep temptation at bay. And since we are to be like Christ, then our life in Christ should look different than our old life outside of Christ. Amen? But again, you've got to discover that and walk in faith concerning that. But it doesn't say that he would bring Christianity. It says, and the government will rest on his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. Yes? Then verse 7, there will be no end to the increase of his, 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 his government. This is shocking. I'm already getting in the spirit. Some people are going, what? 
you've been in church maybe most of your life or you've actually said Jesus was your Savior all the while not knowing that Jesus was the head of a government. Because through your whole life here in the United States of America, you've been listening to your government say separation of church and state. And all this time, you thought you were in a religion when Jesus said, I didn't come to bring a religion. I came to bring the kingdom. Because if we read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you'll see Jesus preach this. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is like. The kingdom of heaven is like this, and the kingdom of God is like that. And publicly, that's all he talked about was God's kingdom. Well, what is the kingdom? It's king's dominion. It's the, the authority and the territory that the king reigns over. Hallelujah. And it's the system by which a governing takes place. Amen. And so Jesus says there will be no end, or Isaiah the prophet says there will be no end to the increase of his, his capital S, his, this is Jesus' government, or of peace. On the throne of David, thrones are in kingdoms, not in religions. And over his kingdom, to establish it and to uphold it with justice and righteousness from then on and forevermore. Righteousness is not a religious word. It's a kingdom word. It means right standing with the governing authority. Hallelujah. It goes on, says, from then on and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will accomplish this. So Jesus came to reestablish a government um, in the earth that he could have citizens in and ambassadors work for. And it just happens to be that all the citizens and the ambassadors happen to be the children of the king himself. Where he doesn't have a kingdom of subjects, but a kingdom of kings. He's the king of and the Lord of. Hallelujah. In this good news. I said, this is good news. Why? Because he's done more than to just save you from eternal damnation and judgment. He has positioned you in Christ, which is in the Messiah, which is in the king who will establish his kingdom and have no end. He's placed you in royalty. Woo! Glory to God. He's placed you in royalty. You are a holy nation, a peculiar people, a royal people. Hallelujah. He makes you a king. Uh, uh, you are a kingdom of priests unto the Lord. Yeah. Amen. This thing's so real when we see it in light of how the scripture actually communicates about Jesus. Yeah. Isaiah, the prophet, goes on in chapter 22 and verse 22 and says this, Then I will set the key of the house of David on his shoulders. Now notice the government is on his shoulders. And the key of the house of David is on his shoulders. Notice, when he opens, no one will shut. When he opens, no one will shut. When he opens, no one will shut. And when he shuts, no one will open. Notice the H's in this verse. Then I will set the key of the house of David on his shoulders, right? On his shoulders. Then when he opens, no one will shut. When he opens, no one will open. Amen. Well, who is the head of the church? Who's the head of the church? Jesus Christ is the head of the church, the Bible tells us. And the church is his body. Is his body. We are the body of Christ. Where are the shoulders located? They're not in the head. They're located in the body. Which tells us then God's government would play out through the body or through his church. Hallelujah. The reality is the church is not really a religious place as much as it is an embassy. It's an embassy where all of us ambassadors come and collect upon the same place in order to receive instruction from the home country. Where the Spirit of God is only hearing what Jesus Christ, who's seated at the right hand of the Father, because he's on a throne, and thrones are in kingdoms, not in religions. And Jesus seated at the right hand of his heavenly Father, who sits on a throne. And the Spirit of God is saying, King Jesus, what would you say to your ambassadors today? And we as ambassadors say, how do you want us to respond in this world that you're currently not residing in physically? How are we supposed to communicate to this world how you want things done? 
And that's what ambassadors do. Ambassadors are appointed by the head of the government. Amen. And ambassadors are only supposed to communicate the policies and procedures of the one who heads the government they represent. See, it's not my opinion. So when anyone says, well, what do you believe? I have no opinion in the matter, but my king. His position is this. And here's the thing about his position. It's the final say. It's the only thing that's forever settled in heaven. Man, this will get your faith going. I said this will get your belief system to another level. Why? Because when you realize that God will make sure what he says comes to pass, then it's easier to actually believe in a God who's king than in a God that you're questioning whether or not he'll do what he said he'd do. A lot of people don't know what he'll do because they just haven't spent time to know him. Because they think the best thing he has to offer, and it's good. Don't get me wrong, it's good. That when I die, I won't have to go to hell. That is not the best God had to offer. He had stuff better than that. He had life now. Reigning now. Even in this condition. His will can come to pass in our life. But you're going to have to dare to believe God. <laughs> you're going to have to dare to believe God. So, there's a key of the house of David that is set on his shoulder. So again, it's in the body. Now go over to Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3, starting in verse 7. Revelation 3, 7, just to let you know that the key is with the church. It says, then the angel of the church. Now in Revelations, there are seven churches that the Lord speaks to, okay? And he calls them churches, so they're churches. But he has a problem with a few of them. And some of them, he's telling them, now listen, this has to change. You just can't continue this course. Because if you continue this course, then I'm going to move my light. In essence, you may call yourself a church, but I'll remove you from being an actual church. All right? So we need to understand that not everyone on the planet that says they're in church is operating exactly as God intended them to operate. Or they may be allowing things to happen in them that God never wanted them to continue to allow happen. Amen. Are you with me? Because again, a lot of times we just take default. Well, that's the church. So all of a sudden we're all the same. These seven churches were not the same. They believed different. They acted different, responded different. So he goes on and says, he who is holy, who is true, who has the key of David, who opens and no one shuts and who shuts and, and, uh, who shuts and no one opens says this. Now he says a few more things, but notice the key of David is in the church. The church of Philadelphia has the key. I said they have the key. Now, who is the key? The key is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit is the key. In essence, they are the master key. Can I see my keys here? They are the master key, all right? Which tells us then they have this ability. They are the key that unlocks every other key. Why do I know this? Turn over to Matthew chapter 16, verse 19. Matthew chapter 16, verse 19, Jesus himself says this. I will give you the what? Not the key, but the keys. Because Jesus is the key that gives you access to the keys. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Now, this word key, lit keys here in the Greek just means key. But it comes from another Greek word, which means to close. So, in essence, Jesus is saying, listen, when Adam fell from dominion, he did not lose a religion. Because Adam, in Genesis 1.26, says this. The Bible says this about him. God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness, and let him have dominion or rule. Over the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, over all the cattle, over all the earth, over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So man was to have dominion. Both male and female had dominion. Well, when Adam ate the fruit that he was not supposed to eat, the Lord said, you can eat from any tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For the day you eat, you will surely die. And we've said this before. If Adam had never eaten the fruit, where would he be today? Which tells us Adam wasn't running around saying when we all get to heaven. 
because heaven kept showing up at earth all the time. He would walk with the Father in the cool of the day. The earth environment and the heaven environment were the same. It's just that Adam ruled this environment while God ruled his environment, and he would rule this environment by obeying what the Father said from heaven. Hallelujah. But when the enemy came in, that is the devil of old, he came in through the serpent, and he deceived Eve, but what made everything go bad is when Adam rebelled against God's kingdom, ate the fruit, the Bible says, through one man's transgression, sin entered the world. And so he gave his dominion over. And if you read Luke's account of the temptation of Christ, you'll see that the devil took Jesus to a high pinnacle and showed him all the kingdoms or domains in a moment of time. Didn't show him one religion. Showed him nothing but kingdoms and said, all this domain I will give to you for they've been handed over to me. The reason why the devil had power is because he got it from Adam. And where did Adam get his power? From the Lord himself. Because in the earth, he gave man that dominion. So why does Jesus come as a man? Because he has to. He gave dominion to a man, so it required a man to take it back. Hallelujah. And when Jesus came as a man, then he was able to legally enter the earth, and he lived without sin, and he became the perfect sacrifice, and now he can freely give dominion back to every person who calls on his name to be Lord. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Now, how real does God, Jesus, want this kingdom to operate in your life? Well, remember what he said to pray. When you pray, pray this way. Our Father. Not his Father, but our Father. Not his Father, but our Father. Not his Father, but our Father. The problem is you think it's just his daddy. It's your daddy. And if, your, if his daddy took care of him like he took care of him, he'll definitely take care of you. The problem is we think that we are the children God doesn't really care for. He cared so much about us, he sent his own son. I mean, he was like, I want mankind back. I want all humanity back. He desires that none would perish, but that all would come to repentance. And I'm going to pay the way through my own son, Jesus Christ. Why? So I can make them king's kids again. So I can make them king's kids again, and I can restore to them the ability to have dominion, authority, and rule while they're in the earth, during each dispensation they're in. Hallelujah. And so Jesus says, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in if heaven can't show up in earth as Jesus said it would, then Jesus is a liar. It's, he's a liar. Well, man, we just can't live heaven on earth. Jesus said you could get heaven into earth. The problem is we don't believe that. It's not that God can't. It's that we don't believe it or we don't have the access to pull it in. We haven't learned how to access it yet. For most of us, we've entered into this relationship with Jesus just to escape planet Earth. Let's well, go into hell in a handbasket. You know what? The planet's never going to hell. Planet Earth will never go to hell. In fact, Jesus is going to make a new Earth. And he's going to burn this one. He has redone the Earth before with a flood. It's still the same planet. The next time, he'll keep the same planet, but he'll burn it off with fire. And then we'll have a new earth as well as new heaven. Amen. And the new Jerusalem is going to come down out of heaven. Hallelujah to the earth. And we'll be with him forever. Whew. Man, we got to read the word of God, right? God has so much access. God's not gotten rid of the planet. In fact, he even tells us that even creation, all of creation, is crying out for its redemption. Planet Earth's not like saying, I can't wait till we blow up and go. <laughs> you know we're not going to be around. He's going to throw us in the lake of fire. All trees, all water, all... No, he's not. No, he's not. Amen. And he's saying, listen, it says all creation is crying out to the revealing of the sons of God. 
We are those who rule and reign. Man, you're going to learn some things in this series concerning the keys of the kingdom. He said, I will give you the keys of the kingdom. Why? Because these keys will do something. This is what Jesus said, Matthew chapter 16, verse 19. He says, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom. Why? Because he's the head of the church. And he says, the keys are going to go to my shoulders. They're going to get down to the government. They're going to get in the church. And the church is going to be able to have the keys of the kingdom. He, he say, goes on and says, and whatever you bind on earth shall have been bound in heaven. I like the New American Standard in this because other translations says, whatever you bind on earth will be. But the reality is nothing will be until it's done in heaven. In fact, we know in 1 John chapter 5, verse 13 and 14, it says this is the confidence that we have, or 14 and 15, this is the confidence that we have when we go and pray to God that if we hear anything according, if we ask anything according to his will, we have it. And whatever we ask, he hears us and it comes to pass. So when we know God's will in heaven and we release it here, so whatever we bind here, God's already said, that's my will to bind it there. And whatever we loosed here, that's my will to, it has been loosed there. Amen. The problem is we don't know what we are to bind or what we are to loose. And what we do is we stand back and wait for God to do something when God's saying, I'm giving you the keys. Now, notice it's not the keys to, it's the keys of. So, where are the keys? The keys are right here. So, next week I'll pull it out because we happen to have one. It's not near big enough, okay? But there is what, what you, if you've been at a place of employment, maybe you even have one at your own house, but whenever there's like a big factory or, or multiple places that you have to, a bunch of keys, then you usually have one box, that has a little lock on it, that that master key opens up all the other keys. That way you don't have to carry them all around. You just need one. It unlocks and gives you access to the rest. Now, the minute you open up the box doesn't mean you've unlocked anything. It doesn't mean that you're walking in light just because it's available. And this is what's happened. When you accepted Christ as your Lord, he gave you the key. The Holy Spirit now will reveal truth to you. He will teach you. In essence, he's going to reveal keys of the kingdom that now you can say, okay, how do I deal with that to do it right there? Have you ever been into a key box before? You better hope they're labeled. There's nothing worse than being in a key box that's not labeled. Great. Well, God, it gives us the Holy Ghost. Everything's labeled. It is written. Hallelujah. I said it's written. And if you'll follow the Holy Ghost, you'll go through. But here's the thing. If the key box is big, and this one is, because the kingdom's huge, yeah. then when you open it up, then you got to start seeking. Yeah. The Bible says if you seek, you'll find. If you knock, the door will be open. If you ask, you'll receive. So all of a sudden, you start going through that key box and say, okay, now where is that key that unlocks the health care system of God? Where is that key? And too many, if it ain't right there, the first one, that's too many. You give up. And the minute you shut it, it's not God's fault. You're not wanting to access what he's given you the key to open up. Jesus opened up all the keys of the kingdom for you. But you got to seek them and gain access to them. Are you with me? So this word, then let, this lets us know keys allow only authorized people to open things locked. That's what they were designed for. Because the Lord said this. When he came down into the garden, he said, Adam, where are you? He said, okay. Well, my realm is going to not have the same access on earth as it did. So I'm going to lock this up. I'm going to lock it up. Because there's only way to act, one way to access. It doesn't matter what dispensation. It's all the same. There's only one way to access it. So he locks it down. All right? And so he says, I need to be able to get it so that man can access it themselves at will. At will. Now, I mean, what I mean by at will, meaning you know his will, and you can begin to access. Amen. Hallelujah. Because he entrusts you with keys. 
okay? And so Jesus comes to establish this, and so he's saying, listen, only my kids are going to be able to tap into my heaven realm. That's why I said our father. My kids are going to be able to pull heaven to earth. My kids will pull heaven to earth. My kids will pull heaven to earth because I'm going to give them keys, the keys of the kingdom. So only authorized people um, are to open things that are locked. So, but here's the deal. Anyone can actually take a key away. So again, come here, Devin. Help me out here. Let's say these are my keys. I'm holding on to them, right? But I'm not really sure what to do. And he can steal them from me. Go ahead, take them and take off with them. Okay, now, he's not authorized, but he is hindering me from accessing. He don't know what to do with them either. Now, why do I say this? Because just because, because there are people who don't know how to use the keys of the kingdom, but definitely don't will come to try to stop you from using them. I'm going to show you two examples real quick, all right? Two examples. In Luke 11, 52, I'll get those keys back here in a minute. You can be seated. It says this, woe to you lawyers. So these are people who are highly educated in the world, in the world's way of doing things, okay? Woe to you lawyers, okay? And this in times, it's not, you know, I'm not necessarily trying to focus just on a lawyer, but I'm focusing on professionals or people who have become well-versed in the things of the world, Okay? says this, for you have taken away the key of knowledge. You yourselves do not enter, and you hinder those who were entering. Which means they're just bringing things to try to create doubt in your life. So you hear that God is the Prince of Peace, and that you can have peace, and don't be anxious for anything but in all things through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be known to God, and the God and, and the peace that passes all understanding will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Ah, oh, but the, the devil will send people by, people who are professionals with your condition or your situation, people who have gone through your problem and have failed miserably in it, and it has overcome them, and they'll tell you how you're not going to make it. Well, you ain't going to make it. I know exactly what's going to happen in your life. I mean, they have, there are professional uh, uh, psychologists who professionally know exactly how sin works because there's nothing new under the sun. Sin is not like different. Sin has happened through all generations, and you can study it. And even though we know how it will respond and what the outcome of it is by following it, certain courses of action, we can't correct it. Why can't we? Because it requires a change of nature in your spirit. Medication won't change it. Won't change it at all. It may subdue it. It may cause you to move to some other kind of addiction or, 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 or some other line of thought, or it may even open up worse. Have you been listening to some of the um, uh, medications you can take uh, on the commercials? You know, increased thoughts of suicide. Wow, how did that happen? I just took a pill, and I want to kill myself. A pill can talk to you? Amen. Increase uh, signs of depression. I mean, I was supposed to take it and believe I was all right. Now I feel worse. <laughs> right? I'm just saying medicating is not the answer. The answer ultimately is a change in nature. Is a change. I'm not saying that if you're on medication, you need to come. I'm saying you need to get into the key box. That's what I'm saying. And when you get into the key box, you'll find that eventually all you need is the key of a kingdom. That's what you'll end up finding out. At some point, if you'll stay with it, I guarantee you, you'll find the key of the kingdom will work. And we're going to testify of this next week, all right? So we also see in Matthew 23, uh, 13, but woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. These are religious people because you shut off the kingdom of heaven from people for you do not enter in yourself, nor do you allow those entering to go in. So there's whole places called churches that will set up um, doctrine that's not even scriptural. They'll base their truth on experience. Well, so-and-so died. Well, everybody's going to die. I understand that unless Jesus returns. And then, but next thing you know, we start creating our own little doctrines, you know, that God's putting sickness and disease on people. Yet, you're not finding that in Scripture. When you actually read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, and when you really get specific into the New Covenant, you're not going to find it. 
You're not going to find it. And even what you see in the others really has to do with God having to step back. Because the Lord was real clear. If you actually read the Bible in context, he says, now listen, this is what's going to go down with you guys. If you obey what I say, none of the sickness and disease that was on the Egyptians, when it says, I put on, basically he says, I gave them the result of their God. Their gods. That's what I gave them. The results of their gods. But if you'll obey me, then none of that will come you. In fact, if you obey me, you'll be blessed coming in and blessed going out. You'll be the head, not the tail. Everything you put your hand to will prosper. I mean, people will come to you to receive money, but you won't have to borrow from nobody. Read that. But then he goes on and says, now, if you disobey me, then in essence, he says, I'll put. But what he's saying is, is in essence, I can't protect you. My blessings can't abound where sin abounds. Because sin pays a wage. It's called death. <sighs> so if you want to continue in sin, then I have to step back and let you receive the payment of that. And it's not that I'm actually doing that to you. It's that you've done it to yourself. But we interpret the Bible based upon circumstance and situation. Well, so-and-so believed God and they died of such and such. What if they didn't? That's a hard thing to say sometimes because the Bible is very clear. The only one who knows the spirit of the man is the spirit of the man himself. I don't care what you're saying. You know as well as I do. You know people that say stuff with their mouth, but they don't live that at all. Well, so-and-so said they'd be here, but I know they're not. Well, are you judging them? Oh, that's another thought. No, you know based upon their actions. Their character, the way it is, they don't do what they say. But they're saying they do a lot. Yeah. And yet the minute someone says, well, I believe in God, I'm healed. But they could be full of fear and anxiety. Because the Bible is very clear about what happens when people do believe. Now, I would much rather call a man a liar than God. In fact, I would. Because if I'm going to say, well, God lies then, well, if God lied, then everything's a lie, and we're all a bunch of miserable mess right now. No, the spirit of truth guides us into all truth. Now, what's so difficult about this is that it's so hard for us to rationalize a lot of times in our mind. But this is why God wants to give you the keys of the kingdom, because the keys of the kingdom is a key of knowledge, something you did not know in how to operate before. And without it, you can't access you can't do anything. I don't care how bad you want a new Tesla. Unless you go and purchase it and receive the keys. I mean, you can go down to any dealership across the street and cry for it and whine for it. And beg it to get off that parking lot. It's going to require a key. I said it's going to require a key. Amen. It's going to require a key. So listen, it's an entirely another thing to know what key unlocks or locks what lock. Now, hand me those keys again. I need somebody to help me. Anybody want to help me? Can I get a volunteer? All right, right here. Let me take this team right here. Come on. Come on, run on down here. Okay. I got some keys here. I'm not going to tell you which one, but here's a lock. That's locked. All right, come in. Let's verify that it's locked. Can you do that? Verify to everyone that it's locked. Verify that it's locked. It's locked. It's locked. Okay. <laughs> there you go. See if you can figure that out. Okay. Now, there's a lot of keys there. Hey, you need some help? I'll, do, I'll give you one thing. See that? Okay. Yeah. There you go. Okay. And here's the thing. <laughs> the reality is, is that keys are there. Now, is the lock going to open by itself? So I don't care how long he stands there trying to look cool. It's going to be locked because I've given him keys. So if it stays locked, it's only because he's not wanting to put forth the effort. I mean, can, you can unlock it if you oh, Go ahead. Sit down. I mean, you may be here a while. The Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God. It's amazing how many people want to come to church and just get a quick microwave answer and go on. 
You want God to unlock it and then you walk out and never be responsible. Amen. When he said in his word, I'll give you the keys of the kingdom. 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 I'll give you. He didn't say I'll withhold. He said I'll give. So you had to come with an expectation you'll actually get something. Let me tell you what keys do. Here are characteristics of keys. Keys do this. The keys, number one, keys are by which the kingdom of God operates. See, when you start gaining access to kingdom keys, then these greatest will be eliminated from your life. We've said this in the past, and I want to remind you, the greatest tragedy in life is not death, but life without purpose. The greatest challenge in life is knowing what to do. I hear that from believers all the time. Pastor, I don't know what to do. Here's the keys. You don't know what to do? Well, you insert, you turn. Is there? Hmm, and none of those keys have it? Yeah, all of them? You are correct. Now, this is what's good about this is that he realized none of these keys fit. And the problem is we want to go and throw open the Bible real quick and try to f say a scripture and act like it's going to unlock your problem. And yet you do have access, but yet the minute you don't find it, you don't go asking. At least he had enough wisdom to examine his keys and say, is this fit this lock? And he's correct. So he would have not because he asked not. Because just because he had something didn't mean he had the right one. And a lot of people will put down the lot, give up on the lot, and walk away and never have a conversation with the Lord. They'll basically say, well, you know, I was praying and asking God. Well, the reality is you didn't actually seek and ask him. Try that one there. The greatest mistake in life is being busy but not effective. There it is. The right key will unlock your blessings. The right key, thank you, will bind up the devil from harassing you. Thank you. So keys are not just to loose heaven's blessings on your life. Keys are also to say, devil, you have no authority here anymore. And the problem is, is people are asking God to heal them, but never dealing with the devil who's bringing the sickness in the first place. I mean, it's like you putting in a security system, but never arming the alarm. Or putting in a security system and leaving your door unlocked or giving the access code to the enemy in the first place. I don't know why my stuff gets stole. I mean, I put it in a security system. Well, you keep giving the code to the devil. You don't run him out. You keep giving him access. Every time he shows up, you say, hey, man, I like to get in your house. I don't know your code. Oh, I'll give it to you. He was such a, such a nice fellow. I mean, the devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy, but he does it under the veil of an angel of light. And you got to know what's not. So you got to take your key and lock down the devil and say, no, you've been bound. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. And then you can turn around and say, thank you, Lord. And unlock the other aspect. you got to lock some things as much as you unlock some things. All right? So the greatest failure in life is being successful in the wrong assignment. And we can eliminate these greatest in our life by just gaining access to the keys of the kingdom. And I'm going to be very general today. I will get into more specifics next week, but if you don't even understand there are keys there. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I just heard the Holy Ghost say to me, he goes, it's amazing how some people sitting right now aren't even paying attention, but if they lost their keys and couldn't get into their vehicle, they'd be frantic. And what they don't understand is there's lost keys to them, and they need to find them. And they're not living with purpose and basically frantic in life thinking, I, I've got to find these. How many of you ever been there? You, you left your key, you're like, and you're like, I mean, everything stops, right? Everything stops now. Where's my keys? Where are my keys? I mean, you digging through your wife's purse, that's the black hole, right? You digging for that stuff? 
You've been through it 10 times. You've turned it upside down, not defined it, only for them to put their magic magnet hand in and it pops to their hand and say, there it was the whole time. Sure, sure, sure. Maybe you had it up your sleeve and dropped it down in the purse. <laughs> I'm not saying, I'm just saying, right? I mean, you're looking. I know I put them there. I know. And you get frantic. Listen, God has keys for us that we need to be, be purposefully looking to find out exactly how to take care of things. Seven characteristics of keys. The first one, the keys are by which the kingdom of God operates. It operates that way. Let me tell you something. If anything's ever been unlocked or locked in your life, it's because somebody came with a key. It didn't by chance. It's because somebody had the key. Maybe you didn't even know God wanted to heal your life, but somebody had a key of earnestly desiring spiritual gifts and was in prayer believing for, for spiritual gifts to happen because they know that not everybody believes God's the healer. And God's healing power doesn't always happen to those who just have faith. Sometimes he'll put it on people who have no faith at all. But just to let them know, there's a key. There's a key. You can get the environment where the gifts of the Spirit to start moving, and all of a sudden, those people have the keys of the gifts of the Spirit. They've accessed them, and they have them, and they're unlocking things from heaven to be able to open up doors and to be able to open up windows so that things can move and adjust in your life so that you'll get a hunger for the keys of the kingdom. Amen. See, keys are principles. That means it's a code of conduct. It's a comprehensive law. These are principles. Keys are laws. That means they're rules enforced by the governing authority. And you want to know that because there's a lot of teaching about we've done away with the law. I'm going to show you next week. There, is, there are laws of the kingdom still in effect. Still in effect. I mean, it makes no sense anyway, guys. Well, the law's been done away with. Well, you know what was part of the law? Thou shalt not kill. Has that been done away with? Because if it's done away with, there's a few people I could put down right now. <laughs> and grace will cover me. And God's going to be fine. Well, obviously it's not. Obviously you have to love your enemy. Yeah. Right? I mean, if thou shalt not kill has been done away with, and we can kill at will now because of the grace of God, well, you know, the planet's going to be less than 7 billion people. Yeah. Because you're like, thank you, Lord. I will eliminate this now. I'll take care of that thorn in my flesh today. Don't look at me like that. Many of you have thought if I could get away with it. But you had to let that go because of the blood of the lamb. Many of you have went into a department store and wanted to take something. Well, that hadn't gone away. That hadn't gone away. Right? Adultery hadn't gone away. That sexual immorality hadn't gone away. It's still in play. It's just that the, the law of spirit and life now has equipped us to not act on those things. Hallelujah. And he helps govern my life. He enforces that in my life every time I yield to it. Lord, I'm just going to walk in forgiveness right now. I'm going to buy my enemy some food with love. And I'm excited I can because two things are going to happen. They're going to get right with you. Because of the love I'm showing, or I'm heaping coals on their head, and it's going to get worse in their life, one way or the other. One way or the other. Okay? Number four, keys are systems. That means it's a network for dis uh, distributing something. It's what keys do. Again, these things, this is not happen chance. These are purposeful believers who have taken the time to go beyond. Jesus Christ died on the cross and rose from the grave, and when I die, I go to heaven. These are people that says, no, I want access. Yes. If Jesus says heaven can come to earth, then how do I get it? Yes. And Jesus says, I'm glad you asked. I'm going to give you the keys of the kingdom, yes. and I'll give them to you. I'll give them to you. Number six, keys, or number five, keys activate function. Function means purpose. Without key, uh, uh, the key of, uh, keys of the kingdom, you'll never accomplish your purpose ever. Because your purpose is going to require you to act, activate systems and activate laws and activate principles and open up the kingdom of God. Number six, keys initiate action. That means to bring about. Do you understand when you get the keys of the kingdom, you will never have a prayer that fails to be answered? Because you won't pray a prayer that can't be. 
When you get the access to the keys of the kingdom, you'll never have a prayer that won't be answered because you won't pray a prayer that can't be. This is why so many people have unanswered prayers. They're delusional about how God operates because they say, well, he's in control. Well, he's not going against his word. He's in control of his word, and anything outside of that, he's not doing. And when you start praying outside of his will and in faith, it's not just praying, but it's praying in faith. Faith is required. You can't hope to not go to hell. You've got to believe Jesus Christ died in faith. You can't say, well, I don't know if it is or not, but I'm going to go ahead and say it. I mean, does anyone believe that a person could come down here and say, Pastor Earl, look, I don't know if this Jesus stuff is right. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. But I'm going to go ahead and say that Jesus died on the cross and rose from the grave, and I ask him to save me and be Lord of my life just to cover myself in case it's right. Do you believe that person will be born again? No, because the Bible says you must believe. That means you are firmly persuaded this is the only way to have a relationship with the Father, and Jesus did exactly that. He literally showed up on the planet. He literally died. He literally shed his blood. He literally was risen from the dead by the power of the Holy Ghost. He literally went up to heaven and poured out his blood on the mercy seat. He literally came back and showed himself as a witness for 40 days. He literally was ascended and sits at the right hand of the Father, and it's by his name and no other name by which a can be saved. It's the only way. It's the only way. Now, until that happens, you're not. And you'll get what Jesus said. Depart from me, for I never knew you. Lord, Lord, didn't I? He said, listen, you spoke with your lips, but your heart was far from me. So the same thing. These aren't last point of keys. Keys cannot be substituted by feelings, emotions, Wishful thinking or manipulation. Now, Lord, if you answer my prayer, I'll do this for you. You're going to bargain. Now, God may allow you to have a conversation with him and says, okay, I'm going to do it because it's my will. And I'm going to, in essence, rattle my keys in front of you, child of God, babe in Christ. Come on, come on. And how many of you ever had some keys for your kids? We did, the little plastic ones. We like, you know, try to help them out, you know, entertain them. Come on, quit crying. Come on, we can, we can, we can, we can, back, we can, back. This is what the Lord's doing. Hey, 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 Right? He's trying to dangle. He said, now listen, pretty soon you're going to be able to hold this. And pretty soon you're going to have enough wisdom and knowledge and understanding. You're going to say, now this key right here. This key keeps me from ever being depressed. Anytime depression comes, I use this key to unlock joy. So this key causes me to unlock me praying in the Spirit, and I get full of the Holy Ghost, and joy overflows in my life. For the joy of the Lord is my strength. So then I pull this key out every time depression comes knocking at my door. It's amazing how many people have this key available but walk around, oh, Lord, I'm so depressed. Lord's like, find your key, man. Find your key, right? You know, this key right here, this key unlocks God's provision, unlocks his provision. That means, man, I know how to unlock God's provision in my life. Oh, Lord, would you do this for me, please? Lord, do it for me. The Lord's like, man, take your keys. In essence, any time in the baby stage of your growth, he's like, hey, I'm sending somebody who can unlock that. Here, let me, we're going to watch. This is how we take care of it. Now, the problem is, is why do we want somebody to be able to control our life like that? Why do I say that? Because there's so many people who will wait for the pastor to pray or wait for the guest minister to show up or follow on YouTube you know, the latest, greatest minister. Whoo, look at them working in the miraculous. Why don't you be the miraculous? Hallelujah. The Lord knows how to copy keys for every one of his kids. Amen. Now, notice, these keys are not for you to say, these are my keys and ain't none of your keys. I ain't got time for you. No, we work together. Amen. 
Because sometimes the Lord starts moving by a spirit, and all of a sudden the Lord wants to do something, and I'm like, hey, who's got this key? I got that key, Pastor. Well, come on up here. Just so God will strengthen you that you can unlock that, and you can unlock this, and you can lock that, and you can lock this. Because this is what keys do in our lives. In Luke chapter 8, verse 10, it says this, And he said, To you it has been granted to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. It's not like he's holding back. He wants you to have knowledge of his kingdom and how it operates so that when you open up the word of God, you can begin to declare the keys of the kingdom. And how do you get kingdom keys to work? I'm going to tell you real quick. You first receive it. You receive a key. No different than, come here, uh, Devin. If I'm like, here, this is the key. I'm going to give you this lock back, all right? So this is his problem, right, that he needs to unlock his problem. And so he has to, number one, believe that this is. This is the key. God is not a man that he should lie. So you receive it. Now, I have it. He's got to receive it. How do you receive that? By faith. You believe. Belief, his word works, is how you receive. Then, like salvation, how do you put the key in the lock? Because now that he has it, it doesn't mean anything if he doesn't use it. Faith without works is dead. Doesn't matter if he turned around and says, hey, everybody, I believe this key will unlock my problem. Go ahead, say it. Hey, everybody, I believe this key will unlock my problem. Yeah. Is this problem unlocked? Is this problem unlocked? Does he have the key? Why is it not unlocked? Because he's not using his faith. I can't tell you how many believers this is the case. They want Jesus to show them and say, okay, gosh, I'll do it. Well, guess what? He's already doing it because he gave you the key. If he didn't give you the key, you couldn't do it. But he's empowered you to do this. He's empowered you. Well, how do you do it? Now it's that same thing. I believe in my heart that Jesus Christ died from, uh, on the cross and he rose from the grave. So from believing with your heart and what? Confessing. So it's your confession of faith. Your confession inserts it. You call those things that be not as though they were. This key unlocks this law. And now your faith, by action, turns it, and look, the problem's done. It's solved. You became a co-laborer with Christ, according to Scripture. Well, Jesus does it all. I can't do nothing. I'm no good. Sorry, no nothing good. Sorry, no good. Nothing, nothing so good. I'm so sorry, no good. I can't do nothing. Jesus made you somebody. You became a new creature in Christ. Then he says, I'm going to give you the keys. Now you somebody. Now go walk around in the authority I've given you, and you begin to bind, and you begin to loose. You begin to unlock, and you begin to lock. Because here's the thing. If you'll seek first the kingdom of God, if you'll seek first the kingdom of God, if you'll seek first the kingdom of God, you will discover how to access or to get the keys of the kingdom to unlock heaven, and it will literally affect your earth. It affects your presence in the earth. God desires for us to seek first the kingdom. Go through his key box and say, there it is. I'll lock this, unlock this in the name of Jesus. Let's pray. Thank you so much for watching Anchor Faith Church's YouTube channel. If you'd like to stay up to date on messages, make sure you hit the subscribe button. And you can also hear previous messages by going to anchorfaith.com. From there, you can find out more about the ministry and even support the vision by giving. And again, thank you so much for watching.